Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to show you how to use an app in Django called Humanize. So Humanize will allow you to add a human touch to your data as they say here. And what I'm going to do in this video is just demonstrate how this works. So it basically converts numbers for the most part to things that are more human friendly. So you can convert words to their actual spelling. So like one converts to O-N-E, one. Or you can add commas to integers. Um, you can add words to bigger numbers. So for instance, you can have something like uh, 1,200,000 and that gets converted to 1.2 million. Um, and then you can convert ordinals or you can convert two ordinals. So like one becomes first, uh, two becomes second and so on. And then finally you can humanize dates in a way. So you can convert like today's date to the word today, tomorrow's date to tomorrow, yesterday's date to yesterday, or you can convert something like a date that was 10 days ago. You can convert that to the actual text 10 days ago or a week and three days ago. So uh, that's what we'll take a look at right now in this video. So here's the documentation. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But to use this is pretty simple. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add this django.contrib.humanize to your installed apps. So I'll go to my settings and I'll add it to my installed apps. So then it becomes similar to how admin, auth, and the rest are used. It's just you're adding humanize here. And then you need to load it in your template. So you just use the template tag load humanize. So I'll just copy this and I'll put it in my template that I have here up at the top. So kind of like loading static, it's kind of the same process. So once you do those two things, you can then use humanize in your template. So what I'm going to do in my view here is I'm going to create a context and I'm going to pass uh, some numbers. So the numbers I'll pass, um, I'll give them like first, second, third, fourth. These will only mean something inside the dictionary, inside the template, uh, they'll get converted. So first, second. So like I said, these are just keys to make it easy to know which numbers I'm dealing with. And that's it. So don't put too much stock in these names. So fifth just like that so what i'll do is i'll just put some numbers in here so let's see six and then i'll put a really big number i'll just type in some characters there i'll put in that number that's and let's say 12. okay so i have five numbers there and i'll pass this to the context or i'll pass the context to the template and now inside the template i'll have access to those so the first thing I want to do is I want to spell the number out. So spell, and I want to spell the first number. So first, let me just put the first number there so we can see it up here. And something crashed in my app. So I just hit save before I had valid syntax or it's still invalid. Let's see, fifth, oh, missing the colon. Okay, there we go. So now we see spell and then the digit six. And to humanize that, I can spell it as S-I-X. So I'll go to my template and I'll use a filter and I'll pass in the spell number filter. So now when I run this, it's telling me invalid. And the reason why is I'm thinking of what it does, not the actual filter name. So the filter name is AP number, not spell number. I just think of it as spelling the number. So AP number, spelling, and it turns into six. So if you look at the documentation, you have AP number there and you see S-I-X. And I can do the same thing for the second number. So spell again, second AP number. And let's see what happens when I do this. Well, when I do this one, nothing happens. So even though I have the filter AP number there, it doesn't spell it out. And the reason why is because the number is just too big. So to handle a case like that, what I want to do is I want to use int word instead of AP number. So if I go to my 
template and use int word. Then we'll see what happens. It says 3.5 quadrillion. So as you can see, once you get over a certain point, uh, you will have to use int word. And that point is actually just anything over 10. So if I change to fifth here, you'll see that it just shows 12. So AP number only works for numbers one through nine. So another thing that I can do with humanize is I can add commas to long numbers. So I'll use the second number again. And the one for this one is int comma. So without it, we know it's just a bunch of digits, but with it, we see that it adds a comma here. So starting from the end, there would be a comma before the next set of three numbers. So three quadrillion there. And like if I take out the filter, it goes away. So those are the first three. And then the last that has to deal with numbers is the ordinal. So ord denal. And I want to take the, let's see, I have the fourth number. So fourth and I'll do or no here. So what happens now is I misspelled fourth. We see 4,512th. So the TH gets added to the end of it. So if I change this to like the fifth number, so I know this is a little confusing with the names of the keys and then using ordinal, but the fifth number is 12. So I should see 12th just like that. So the four things that you can do to a number are pretty straightforward. The other things that you can do have to deal with dates. And there are two things that you can use for dates. So this works with both Django dates and regular Python date times. So I'm going to import date time and I'll just do now. So date time dot date time. Now that represents the time that is right now. So I'll pass that to the template. And we'll notice that when I pass this in as a variable, it converts it to a nicely formatted date. So that's pretty typical in what Django does. But now if I want to convert that to the natural day, I can do that. So the natural day is going to be natural day. And we see it says the word today. And this works on dates that are either today, tomorrow, or yesterday. So if it's anything other than those, then it just displays the date. So what I'll do is I'll add a time delta in here. Uh, let's say minus date time dot time delta. And you know what, I'll, I'll just put other dates here and I'll just do now and then I'll add the time delta here. So now minus day time time delta days let's say one. So this is yesterday. So in, if I uh, other day if I change this to natural day and this should then be other dates is the name of the variable. We'll see that it says yesterday, but if I change this to something further back, like five days ago, then we see the date. So like I said, it only works for today, tomorrow, or yesterday. And if I add one day, we see tomorrow. And then finally, let's say future and past. So these dates are going to be some dates that aren't anywhere close to today or tomorrow. So for the past, I'll just use minus and then for the future, I'll use plus here. So I'll do 542 days there and then let's say 14 days here and we'll see the difference. 
So future and then pass. And we see the dates are actually spelled out. So in the future, I have March 30th, 2020. And in the past, I have September 21st, 2018. So if I put the filter natural time, we'll see how this changes. So natural time there and natural time there. We see that in the future is now one year, five months from now. And in the past is two weeks ago. And it doesn't matter what numbers I change this to. So if I add, let's say 2,542, and then I change this to like 104 days, it will update accordingly. So now the future is six years, 11 months from now. And then the past is three months, two weeks ago. So it's converting that date time object to this representation. And this works pretty well on something like a blog or a forum app where you want to specify how long ago something happened or in apps where you want to specify exactly how far in the future something is going to happen. So those are pretty much the six things that you can do in the Humanize app, the set of filters that comes with this app when you add it to Django. And if you want to look at the documentation, I'll put that in the description below. So if you have any questions about this, of course, you can always leave a comment and I'll answer them. If you haven't been to my website, check out prettyprinted.com. I have tutorials on Django. I have free videos. I have premium videos if you want to check those out. I also have videos on Flask and just general Python web development. So if you want to learn more about that, just go to prettyprinted.com. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.